Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. So um, this is the second uh, Thornbridge uh, beer review I'm doing tonight and I've already done this one but hands up I made a bit of a mistake and I might even delete that one but go back and check the first uh, Union uh, beer review that I did and um, I did this the review I was like overexcited and I put it in the fridge left it in the fridge and I had it too cold I think so here it is here's the Union beer from Thornbridge right so this is the first official beer to be brewed on the Burton Union system at Thornbridge um, so this is coming in at seven percent an Indian pale ale uh, it's a really 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 lovely beer but what I did was I had it too cold um, and from memory and I will check and if there's any difference I'll put it up here in um, a description um, it suggests that you have it between 10 and 14 degrees so we are talking right up there with a cask pour you know 10 degrees being the cellar temperature and then by the time it's come up the pipes and been poured to the top you know the, the beers kept in a cellar are around about 10 degrees that's a good optimum temperature for for, for cellar for cask ale and things like that but then by the time it's come up the pipes you know if it's just drawn straight up it's not going because a lot of keg beer i know goes through chillers as it as it go as it goes up and sometimes people can say the, the pipes are too cold because like some somehow as it goes up it gets chilled at, as it comes up you know because them kegs are still in the cellar but it needs reducing in temperature whereas like a hand pulled beer it's like straight from the keg if it, when the, the old style on a tilter straight from the cask put hand rid up to the pump so by the time it gets up there and gets on the bar gets in your hand two minutes talking to your mate it's probably up to 14 degrees so i want to serve this now at a um more of a cascale temperature so i've literally it's in here now it's 16 degrees in here so I was hoping it'd be around about the 14 degrees in here of not, but it's quite a warm evening, really. Um, so I've put this in the fridge for about half an hour. So and then I've took it out for about 10 minutes. So this is probably coming in feeling this compared to the last beer I've had. You probably are talking. This is going to be just chilled at around about the 10 degrees. And then by the time I've I've cracked it open, it'll be a little bit warmer. Anyway, let's crack this open. But what I'm going to do is, and I hope I don't mess this up. As I feel I'm a bit of a, I'm not too bad with this. I'm going to put it in the physics machine. Now this is a bottle conditioned beer, so the physics machine doesn't go all the way down to the bottle, the bottom. And there is people that have said Andy Dunn from the from the Ellen Audio podcast has said put a couple of um, beer mats at the bottom. You have to really be careful with the physics machine because if you put too many, the pipe hits the bottom and it won't even work. Um, whereas you know it's going to leave a little bit in the bottle but what i'm going to do is so i'm going to give this a little bit of a foam to start off with and then we'll pour it uh, i'll try my best i don't know how it's going to turn turn out but then the last bit i will pour by hand so i just want to aggravate this and just give it a bit of a more of a craft pour okay so here we go so a bit of foam to start off with you have to be careful with this because it does really produce foam very very well in fact just under normal pouring this will this will pour and it will give you quite a decent amount of foam as you'll see in a minute so i'm going to stop that there because look you can see and i don't want that to pour over too much because it's too much of a good beer that in retrospect i probably could have got away <laughs> with not even doing the backward pour on this so look, I mean, just let's just take a look at that start of it. Now this is a nucleated glass here. Any of any what you've just seen there could be on the outside of the glass. This is a nucleated glass. That is an absolutely. It looks like it has picked up actually. When I said about whatever, it looks like it's picked up some of the sediment. Look, you can see some of the sediment floating around there. Mm -hmm. It's probably picked up some of that sediment. Plus, I've not been too careful in. I've not the, the glass. The bottle has only been in the fridge for like I say a short amount of time, so it's not had time. Really, if you want to, in, in in fairness, they are saying it's a bottle conditioned beer. So they want you to pour it carefully and gently because they want you to have this amazing clear pint. 
but we always tend to swill it and, and throw it in. So what's that done? That has picked up some of, it's not quite settled, it's picked up some of the sediments. But aside from that, look how beautifully the colour, if I hold it back so you can forget about the sediment in there that it's picked up, look how beautiful that beer is. It's absolutely amazing. The head on that from this pour from the physics machine is like, it's, it's like creamy, really like thick head. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this out now. So I really did stop this pour quite early. Thank you, physics machine. Always doing the job perfectly. So there's quite a lot left in that bottle. I don't know whether you can see there. There's quite a fair amount in there. So let's swizzle this round and let's just like get a little bit of a, a finish pour in here. Now, even though it's bottle condition, it's not, I mean, there is, look at that, there's a few floaters coming in there. Now, look at that, all that goodness going in the beer. I tell you what, there's a lot of people, if I show them that beer now, you know, especially some of the old, I mean, I'm old school. I'm an old school real ale boy. But I've learned a lot. <laughs> but like, you know, it's good having a bit of, um, a bit of the goodness. So what I'm going to do is I might leave, leave that there for a minute just to settle. And then I might pour that into a separate little glass um and have the last little bit anyway so there it is beautiful color very light um almost like marmalade color this is this is like a real orangey marmalade sort of color it's absolutely this is a stonking beer and this is one of the reasons why in my october beer club thornbridge beer club box i ordered quite a few of these not too many because i can order them at any time i want as long as they keep brewing them which i think they will as soon as i hear a sniff that they're not going to brew them i'll be ordering loads so um yeah brilliant beer let's get into this this is seven percent i believe abv uh yep seven percent in the bottle it was a it was a less of a percentage um when it was on draft but seven percent in the bottle just to keep it just bottle condition it and keep it keep it a bit more alive you know what i mean a bit, bit more protected right cheers everybody let's get into this two two beers on a tuesday night beautiful i needed it as well because the job's been a poor oh. i can smell the this gives a little bit of toffee as well and more toffee than the caramel i can also smell that sort of water alteration that they do right cheers mm. oh my god Ooh, my god that is a good beer oh oh honestly if i can if i can give you like if I can help you learn from my mistake, do not have this beer cold. Do not have this beer cold. In fact, I'm going to edit my first video and 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 put on it um, first first time re review. I had this too cold. Please see my other review because you really are missing out on. Oh, I just want to get all that in there. Having it too cold, you are missing out on what this beer has to offer. And I really messed up. I, me I mean, don't get me wrong. When I had this beer and I had it cold, I had it out of... I've got two fridges down here. One that's one that I like to regulate at one temperature and one that I like to regulate a lot. So I have one that I put all my German lagers in, things like that. I like to have that a bit colder so they're really cold. Then I have my sort of craft beer fridge, if you like, which I'll probably try and keep them around about three or four... Four degrees, something like that. So I know that when you take them out, they will warm up a little bit. But trust me, this was in. I put this in the fridge that the, the uh, bottle will stand in, the German lagers and things stand in. It was too cold. It probably three degrees. Too cold. Now, at this temperature, oh. Oh, my God. You're almost getting a, oh, like a raspberry toffee. I mean, Thornbridge might tell me, raspberry. No, there's like almost like a raspberry and a strawberry toffee. Oh, strawberry notes, berries, red berries and oh, 
strawberries and raspberries and like lots of different types of like sort of red fruits if you know what I mean um oh alongside them toffee malts and oh not not lot mass not massive caramel bit of caramel but oh do you know what I've literally I don't know whether this has helped now I do I've got it right here I'll show you so I've just done this the 90 shillings which was a, a basically a strong amber ale but I always have this and I, <laughs> I don't have it with lemon in but this has got lemon in so I always have a plain tonic water that I'll swirl around my mouth really have a good swirl around whatever it honestly it resets your mouth um but I don't know whether the I don't know whether these two are like brothers they, they just help they help each other out but this is fabulous mmm The fruity notes in that, with the toffee notes as well, and then the multi, fruity, multi, beautifulness. Oh, God, blimey! That. I'd... Do you know what? I've had this at this temperature as well, but I wasn't reviewing it. I wasn't talking about it. I think what it was. I was just down here one night. I think this is what inspired me to do it. I was down here one night, and I think my other one that I had might have just been down on the, on the floor here, so it would have been like um, not not ready to go away. But I had the air conditioning on, so this this cabin never it round about it was around about sixteen degrees, and I think I cracked it open and just drank it. I thought, oh, you're beautiful. That's different. That tastes different to what I've what I've had before. And then I did a bit of research on it, and it, when it says serve between 10 and 14 degrees, I thought, wow, you know, that is what I should have done. Why did I make that mistake? Um, but, you know, it's a blimmin' IPA, isn't it? It's an Indian Pale Ale. I mean, I, okay, I had it too cold. It probably wants to be 6 degrees as an Indian Pale Ale, maybe. Um, but I didn't think in my wildest dreams that it want to be up to, like, 14 degrees. But it really does. It really, really does. I mean, you know what? This time of the, this time of year, literally, this is a beautiful garage beer. Put, pop it out in your garage. It'll probably be sitting around about the 14 degrees. I mean, I know it'll go down to about 5 degrees at night. But, you know, by the time you get home at night, it's probably 10, 11, 12 degrees or whatever. Oh, my God. The actual red berry fruits in this, the... The fruitiness in this, balanced alongside that caramelly toffee, delicate malt, is absolutely fantastic. It's a hashtag Speno waffle, 10 out of 10. I'm sure I gave it the 10 out of 10. The only thing I'm not getting as much this time, because I'm, I'm being so delighted with the fruity and malty taste that's going through this. The one thing I did get really big time when I had it cold was that gypsum snatch um i am getting now i've thought about it again once you think about it it's like if you do a beer review um so this well when i say this friday it'll probably be this video might come out beyond that but anyway uh friday the 18th of october but you can look back on the instagram me and my mate kyle from beer bro reviews we're going to be doing um some beer reviews together and the thing is i went down to Wales to see him and we went and we drank beers and I had one taste he had another but then once once we told the other what we were getting all of a sudden you could you could get it you could get it so it's like a suggestive thing isn't it you know it's that whole if someone does this oh when they're at work they sit back like that the, ne the next thing you might find yourself doing that is that whole suggestive thing isn't it so um you know when when I've just suggested about that burn snatch, that gypsum, I'm starting to almost get it now. And what it is, it's like a dusty plasterboardy type of taste at the back of your mouth. It's almost like, you know, if there's plasterers out there watching this, when you're cutting your plasterboard, and especially when you got that um, you, you, the reamer where you, because I've used it myself, and you and you basically planing the plasterboard down, the dust is all coming off. And years ago we wouldn't wear masks and things. Now we do wear masks. But you won't wear a mask and you'd be taking it in and you just have that dry gypsum throat. And that's what this gives you. Well, it gave that's what it gave me when I was when it was cold. But now I've thought about it, now I've made that suggestion to myself, 
that's what this is giving me now a little bit only a little bit because the berries and the the fruit and the malts and that are too beautiful to really notice that it's almost like it's there and it needs to be there but i'm more interested in the fruitiness and the maltiness mm. oh god this is um, this is i think if you're a cask beer lawyer if you're a traditional beer lover if you are in fact like oh my god this is the sort of beer i want to send to slurpy dave um check out his youtube videos he's brilliant he's over in the isle of man he does lovely tours around the pubs and the scenery and everything and he's he, his one-liners are fantastic um th this he's got no chance of having this i don't think i don't think they'll de they won't deliver to the isle of man I wonder how much. I wonder how hard this will be to post to the Isle of Man. I'd love him to try this, Dave. You'll be watching this. I'd love you to try this, mate, because this is everything, everything about a beer that I think you would love. Um, if you are a traditional ale drinker, if you're a traditional cask hand pulled drinker, this has got all the qualities that you could ever imagine. And I can understand why, why, why I loved Pedigree all them years ago. I don't love it so much now. It's still all right. I've had it in this year. It's still okay. But it was one of those beers that used to be fantastic. It used to be one of them beers you'd go out with your... Well, I never used to go out with my dad, but I'd go out with my mate's dad. And we'd, go down, we'd actually go down the Union. There's a, there's a pub in... Aylston, which is like a couple of miles down the road from me, called the Union. It makes me realise now, looking back, it's probably called the Union because they they were pedigree and Marsden's pedigree pub that served pedigree that's brewed on the Union. That's why it's probably called the Union. But anyway, I just remember how fantastic it was. It's not so fantastic now, but that was a beer that used to chase you and catch you and knock you out. This is a, this is another level. Oh, I've got nothing more to say about this. It's just fantastic. It's unbelievable. Oh, everything is tough. Really, the tough, the toffee is dominant rather than the caramel. It's more, I know that sounds daft because caramel and toffee are sort of like a, a mush of the much this, but this is more like, this is more like a toffee taste alongside all them fruits and berries and things. <sighs> it's a wow beer. It really is a wow beer. It's brilliant oh my god I could, I could i could waffle on forever but i'm not going to write thornbridge the union indian pale ale seven percent grab yourself some of this while you can i'm sure they're going to continue to brew this i really hope they do um and have it basically especially this time of year just don't chill it or anything just put it put it put it outside put it in your garage probably in your garage really it's not not outside so it's got to be enclosed so it don't get too cold but make sure you have this round about the 13 degrees 14 degrees it's right up there because you will get all them mellow beautiful toffee malty fru fruity loveliness i'm sure the yeast like i've said before is giving this beer some some flavors as well i mean on the nose it really is toffee and i tell you what to be honest with you even everard's when they're everard's tiger is nice and the right temperature and it's poured right and it's looked after well that gives a similar vibe to this i mean that's only about 4.5 percent and the old original the same and um, that reminds me it's got a similar toffee taste because i always say oh when i've had a, a really good part of tiger oh you can taste the toffee in that which is great this is mm. right i'm off i can't i can't stand i've got i've got to enjoy this on my own and just waffle to myself Cheers, everybody, for watching, and thank you, Thornbridge, once again for an absolutely outstanding beer. I can't believe it. Cheers, everybody. Go and check out Thorn. Join that beer club. You won't regret it. Right, I've been Spenno. Make sure you live, laugh, love, always. Keep a smile on your face. And Cheers. I'm good at giving advice. I wish I could take it myself. Be good.